Yo, 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 yo. What's up, people? What's going down? What's popping? How are we feeling today? How we feeling today on this nice Monday? Monday, uh, I guess this would be what is this technically the evening or does the evening start uh at 6 p.m.? So uh we'll just say good evening on this nice Monday. Um Excellent, excellent, excellent weather out here today. Uh, here, here where I'm at in Georgia, you know. So if you had an opportunity, you know, make sure that you got out today, enjoy some of this weather. It's springtime is upon us, and before we know it, that 90 degree heat uh, will be back upon us once again. So welcome in, y'all. Welcome in. Welcome in. Um, you know, we don't normally come on at this time, but there was something that that uh, some news that that broken was reported um, that involved the Falcons and uh, decisions that we made in, in the 2021 draft. So I did want to come on and, and discuss that also as well with you guys and, you know, uh, <clears throat> get your thoughts about it, give you all my thoughts about it. And so have you uh, do me a, a huge favor. Make sure that you do hit that like button for me. Um, that way we can jump in the YouTube algorithm you know, the, of course, the more likes we get, the uh, the more favorable the the video and the content becomes to YouTube, and um, you know they'll they'll show it out to more more people. Um, we're not streaming right now on um, X or Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. I was watching Uncle Steve shows yesterday, and uh, he mentioned that Facebook is going to stop allowing the third party streams on their platform. So. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to drive all the traffic from Facebook to YouTube, you know, so everybody that, that you know, is, is prone or, or used to watching Atlanta Bird Gang on uh, Facebook, uh, you know, just come on over to the YouTube streets. Uh, same thing for everybody that watches Uncle Steve on, on uh, Facebook as well in Atlanta Bird Gang. You know, y'all come on over to YouTube, um, you know, and catch us on YouTube, you know. Um, it's probably all about competition. <laughs> you know, Y'all know how these social media platforms can get when it comes to competition um i want to thank again i want to thank everybody for coming in make sure you do hit that like button uh as well for me do definitely appreciate it uh let's see who we got checking in thus far we got andre 3000 in the building says uh <clears throat> smith is on some fedex bs glad he gone and gonna mess up pittsburgh uh, shout out to you, Dre. Appreciate you coming through. C double in the building. What's up with you, C double? How you feeling, man? Appreciate you always coming through, showing a bunch of love. So this is gonna be good. Me and Ron have been talking about this mess. Shout out to Ron also. Uh, shout out to Ron. Um, shout out to the to my brother C Dub as well. Yeah, uh, we are we are planning on having uh Jeff um come in and, and really discuss this with us and and, and um uh, talk about this also. Um, as C Dub said, him and Ron have been talking about it. And to be honest, um, that's a big reason that I wanted to discuss it today. Because quite naturally, as we all know, the Falcons have moved forward. You know, Kirk Cousins is our quarterback. You know, that's our quarterback going into 2024. I'm sure that's going to be our quarterback going to 2025 as well. 2026 and, and beyond. Well, we'll we'll wait and see what happens. But um this has been such a, a um, as usual with, with Falcons fans, this has just been such a dis, the, uh, divisive, um, compelling, polarizing topic. When, when it comes to, you know, the Atlanta Falcons, Justin Fields, quarterback position, then it also involves Arthur Smith, you know. So we're, we're going to take a, a step back and, you know, kind of revisit it and talk about it and, and hopefully we can get some um inside information so uh, that's why we're talking about it today but you know as we all know like i just mentioned you know uh kirk cousins is our guy in, in 2024 you know so that's the guy you know we're going to be pulling for you know once the season gets ramped up here in the uh the summertime <clears throat> as i was coming on uh I'm, i noticed also uh, and y'all pardon me for uh getting off topic but i noticed on my um youtube timeline that uh puff daddy diddy brother love is getting rated 
is his uh I didn't get to really watch any of the content. I'll, I'll dig into it once I, I'm done with this stream, but looks like he's getting raided by the FBI. Um interesting. I will say I I I, I saw that coming. Uh, you know, based on everything that has been going on with him lately, I won't dig too deep into that on YouTube because you know, certain certain things YouTube don't really like you to talk about. So I really won't talk about it or say certain words on here. But yeah, I am noticing that uh, as of this broadcast, man, uh, they are currently raiding his house or or have raided the house. Um, so I'll have to check that out <clears throat> after I get off this broadcast, man. <clears throat> Uh, who else we got checking in the building? We got, um, in my bad, y'all, if I start straining my eyes and, and, and being hesitant when I read, it, it's not that I can't read or, or I'm not very articulate, even though I'm country, and I, I don't have my glasses on, man. Uh, Brian says, but he's still winning. Uh, got, got the guys that couldn't <clears throat> process the defense. Shaking my head, man, more and more. Why does this organization always look like fools? Um, speaking of Arthur Smith's uh, decision to bring in a guy like Marcus Mariota and also uh, everyone's favorite quarterback, Desmond Ritter. Totally, totally understand where you're coming from. We got our guy Greg in that building. What's going on with you, Greg? How we feeling, bro? How you doing? Says, uh, what's up, Tidy? I'm chilling like a villain, man. I really could not be better. Well, I could be better, but you know, you know I mean, like $2 million, $3 million in cash, I'd be a whole lot better. But, you know, you know how that go. You know how that go. Um, also, y'all, keep the comments coming. You know, uh, as I mentioned, we're going to bring in our guy, Jeff, and we're really going to dig as much. We're going to dig as deep as we can into and, and, and the the Justin Fields, uh, Archer Smith, uh, Terry Fontenot, whatever we can pull out of Jeff on exactly what happened and uh, what transpired. So, you know, we're going to really get the ball rolling on that. And uh, y'all keep the comments coming. Uh, if I can ask him any questions that, that y'all want me to ask him in the comments, I'll try my very best. But we're going to get the show on the road, y'all. We're going to bring in our guy, Jeff, to the stage. Jeff, how you doing, brother? How you feeling, bro? Good. What's going yeah, on, brother? You doing all right? Perfectly fine, man. Perfectly fine. Uh, let me first off start off, Jeff, and say uh, thank you. Uh, for coming on today, uh, and also, I really, I really appreciate you coming on on such short notice, man. I, <clears throat> I know I reached out to you today, just a few hours ago, and you was like, "Yeah, bet I can do it." So I really appreciate that. I thank you, and all our viewers, thank you for that as well, sir. Yeah, man, no problem. Yes, I'm glad we can all work right, it so, out. Uh, let's 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 jump right into it, Jeff. If you don't mind, give us a like a little quick background on you know who you are, and you know if you like where you're from, and you know how long you've been a Falcons fan. Yeah, man. So uh, originally, I'm actually I was born and and spent most of my most of my youth uh, in in Phoenix, Arizona. I spent time really going between there and San Diego, California. So I'm a West Coast kid. Uh, moved out to uh, moved out to Atlanta. Actually, I guess it's called Sandy Springs now, but back then it was Atlanta. Uh, back uh, right before uh, right before the Braves won their '95 World Series. Actually, so I was 16. Uh, I graduated from Riverwood High School uh, right there uh, in Atlanta, um, and. Uh, I mean, really, I've been here, you know, ever since, uh, except for the short time where I went away to college and did some other things. And, uh, yeah, man, so I've been here for, uh, God, almost 30 years. Uh, and, and so, you know, been here a long time and, and, you know, you, you've been somewhere a long time. You just, you, you kind of, you know, you, your sports allegiance change, right? It's, uh, it's one of those things. So, uh, you know, I spent some time, uh, working for a radio station here in Atlanta, which I'm sure everybody's aware of now. They they are the home of the, the Falcons. And so I spent uh, time covering the Falcons, the Hawks, uh, Atlanta United, the Braves. You know, was a reporter, had a nice show here again on, on that radio station. Uh, and, and so, you know, I've been kind of uh, in, in the sports scene here professionally. Uh, I don't do it anymore, but I spent uh, almost a decade uh, in sports professionally as far as uh, in, in radio. Uh, and so, you know, I've just, I've been a fan ever since. And, and, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I, I've just been lucky to, to meet the right people and know the right people. And, uh, you know, it's, I don't know, it's, I, I guess that's a little bit about me, I guess, I, you know, I have a, a degree from, from Clemson, um, you know, so I'm a Clemson tiger. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I'm, I'm a pretty open book. 
Awesome. Uh, so you came right before the Olympics came to Atlanta. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, right. we were actually, uh, so going back to, to the 96 Olympics, we had actually left. We were at the Olympics the day of the Olympic Park bombing and had left about Ooh. 90 minutes before that took place. Mm, man. Yeah. Funny how things work out, huh? Do what? I said, it's funny how, how things work themselves out. You know, what's actually crazy, though, is, is my junior year at Riverwood, um, we, you also had, I don't know if you guys, are, I, I, what you all know, uh, I'm sure everybody here is probably younger than I am, but um, Eric Robert Rudolph was, uh, he was eventually convicted of the Olympic Park bombing, but he also uh, blew up. Uh, an abortion clinic in San, what is now known as Sandy Springs, right off of 285 in Ross Road, mm. uh, right off of Carpenter Drive. Uh, we actually live right next door to that, uh, and I couldn't go home that day. It, I I was at school. I I was kept. I was called down to the principal's office uh, that day, and we were kept at school. If we lived off of Carpenter Drive, we were kept at school that day uh, till almost like eleven o'clock at night before we could even get home. Uh, so yeah, I've been here for a minute and and, and seen some things. Wow, man, that, that's that's crazy, uh, to, to say the least. I, I do want to ask you one other thing about about more specifically the city of Atlanta. Um, Atlanta has changed, you know, tremendously um, since you originally came when you were 16 years old. Um, yeah. If you don't mind, tell me, you know, uh, one thing or a couple of things that 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 stick out to you in regards to the changes uh, that you've seen from Atlanta since 94 to 2024. So uh, th this is probably going to go a very different way than, than 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 you want it to go, but I'm 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 pretty honest about everything, uh, and so for me, I come from a blended family, right? Like we we all all don't look like me, okay? Uh, and so my introduction to the South was was a very difficult one. Uh, again, coming from the West Coast, where where you know people get along regardless of what they look like, and coming to the South, you know, even in the mid '90s, was very different. Uh, and so, you know, the, the story that I'll never forget is we were going up to uh, Forsyth County uh, to play South Forsyth. Uh, again, this was 1996. Mm. Uh, and as soon as you got off what is now 400, um, there was a sign that said very specific things to a very targeted group of people. Basically being if you weren't out of, out of here be before sundown, uh, you weren't going to be alive anymore. Uh, and I remember seeing that on the bus and being like, where the hell are we? Like, what, what is going on that that is like, you know, this is 1996. Like, this isn't 1848 anymore. Like, what is going on? And, and I'll never forget that night. We had, uh, we got into a bunch of fights that night because certain words were being used at my teammates. Uh, and, and, you know, we were not going to stand for that. And so uh, eight of us got ejected from, from a football game that night uh, mm -hmm. because even officials were using, you know, where I'm talking about. So. Um, you know, just to kind of see how far we've come. And, uh, I live up in Cobb County now and, and my best friend and I joke all the time, um, you know, how back, you know, when, when my parents moved up here in, in 1997 into Cobb County, how he would not have been welcome up here and how, uh, you know, my kids graduated from North Cobb high school. And, you know, now that school is, is 45% white. So just, you see the demographics change and you see people getting along that, that would happen. So I think for me, just seeing that change in Atlanta from when I got here to where we are, you know, 27 years later, I think is an amazing change. And, and uh, I think we're continuing to evolve despite what we may see uh, on, you know, TV or hear from, you know, social media because, you know, things like to highlight the negativity. But for me, just the love that has grown in the area and, and you see people getting along that may not have 30, 40 years ago. So for me, that's always going to be a big change that, that I see and, uh, and, and that I, you know, that I can point out to. Yeah. And that, that's, that's a change for the better. I, I noticed when you were talking, you, you said Forsyth County, and I do remember back in the day, and you probably remember this too, uh, but Oprah Winfrey, you know, she she had a a, a, a oh, certain yes. clan <laughs> on her show, and coincidentally or not so coincidentally, they were from Forsyth County. So that don't surprise me at all, my friend. Yeah, Forsyth unfortunately was known as a sundown town for for many many years, and I think it was only until recently that it it, it got away from that moniker. Don't know if it's changed or not. I try to stay away from Forsyth County just because unfortunately, you know, sometimes you have a a negative experience. You try not to go back and and replicate those things, but. Uh, you know, hopefully things have changed over there. I know they have in, in my area here in Cobb. Yeah, from what I've heard, I actually uh, have a friend who lives in Forsyth County, and she mentioned that it, it definitely has changed, uh, which is a good thing. 
All right, so uh, with with that said, Jeff, let's get down to the business, man. Yeah, man. Uh, you, you have you have really kept us up to date uh, with a lot of inside information here in, in the, the the Falcon sh uh, stratosphere, uh, specifically coming from Twitter. Um, a lot of things that you have put out in the, the Twitterverse have came to fruition uh, in regards to you know certain insider things. Now. What you put out today was something that I had been waiting for you to comment on because I think you mentioned that you you were going to drop the T uh, mm -hmm. late last week and and you, and you dropped it today. Mm -hmm. Now I would love to read this your own tweet to you and then have you elaborate on it because of course on Twitter you only can do I think what 140 characters right? Something like that. Yeah, I don't I don't pay for the uh, for the extra the extra room so. All right, so here you go again. I'll read it to you, and then I'll ask uh, if you don't mind to elaborate just a little bit more sure. on it. Here, here we go. This is coming from Jeff's uh, Twitter, y'all. He says, Falcons, Arthur Smith, and Justin Fields. Falcons were going to draft Justin Fields fourth overall in 2021. However, Arthur Smith hated him after their meeting and said he wouldn't coach him. Falcons went with Kyle Pitts, who was the best player available on their draft board. Um, I know Terry Fontenot has screened best player available in his draft policy, but remember, McKay has been running this show until about a month ago. Oh, the other QB that Smith had no interest in in signing, Russell Wilson. Also, you say Arthur Smith was very against having Justin Fields for the Falcons due to his processing ability or lack thereof. <laughs> That is all. So I, I want people to understand uh, when when I when I tweet things out that are coming directly from my person uh, within the organization, I copy and paste. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't ad lib. I don't. Uh, I may change some words as far as like the internal dialogue between themselves and myself, uh, but the message is all directly copy and paste, right? And so um, you know there are things that I get that I don't. I I may wait a week to ten days to put out just because. Um, if, if I put out things immediately, um, it would probably send off alarms. Right. And so I, you know, we, we always talk about timeframes to put things out and, you know, I may tease some things every now and then, but, uh, as far as that goes, yeah. So that was something that he and I had talked about last week. Um, as, as far as, um, the whole Justin Fields thing, um, because obviously, you know, with Fields going to, to the Steelers for essentially they traded him for a cup of coffee and a half eaten water burger. Right. Uh, and, and people were, you know, like, oh my God, why couldn't we have done that? And I think what people have to understand is, is Chicago basically spent six weeks trying to entice teams to, to trade for him. Uh, and Atlanta did initially reach out. And at that point when Atlanta initially reached out, the bears wanted eight overall, right? Like they, they wanted the eighth overall pick, which, uh, they were never going to get the, the Falcons were never going to entertain that. They're not going to entertain that for Hassan Reddick. They're not going to entertain that for Legereus Sneed. They weren't going to entertain that for Justin Fields. They are not going to get rid of number eight to trade for a guy that's, that's currently in the NFL. That just was not going to happen. Unless, unless you're talking about one of the elite, you know, top 10 players in the league, right? And, and those guys are available for a very specific reason. Uh, and, and so, uh, just kind of going over that and, and listening to, to the whole field saying, and, and, you know, he was like, yeah, you know, just, just, you know, kind of going back and forth, uh, you know, going back to 2021 when they did take, uh, uh, pits, um, who hadn't necessarily, I mean, if you go back and, and you go back and, and, um, look at all of the pre-draft mocks and everything. Nobody really had him going to Atlanta. I think everybody agreed that he was the best athlete in the draft. Uh, and he was, you know, probably the mo most uh, talented pass catcher in the draft, whether you're talking tight ends and wide receivers combined, uh, mm -hmm. but people really hadn't mocked him to Atlanta. They had, they really had mocked, you know, uh, fields to, to Atlanta uh, for the most part. And uh, that was the plan. They were going to go with Justin Fields. Uh, and then unfortunately, Arthur Smith got involved and, and had a one on one meeting with him. And it was, a, I've been, it was described to me as almost going back to um, on ESPN when they used to hold um, the former Raiders coach um, that got fired last year, the year before. Uh, Chucky? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, when he used to do the one on one with quarterbacks where he would sit down with them and, you know, go over things and, um, you know, and have them. You know, you know, script out plays and, you know, what they're reading, they'd break down film. 
Arthur Smith basically had that type of interview with, with Justin Fields, and he came away extremely unimpressed and said, I'm not going to coach that guy. He's not smart enough to pick up my offense, and I'm not going to spend the time, effort, and energy to try to develop him. Uh, and so, you know, unfortunately, the powers that be decided they were going to listen to Arthur Smith, and um, and they ended up going w- with, uh, with, with Pitts instead. And, uh, you know, for me, it, for, from – I think if you can look at that objectively, some people in the comments, I'm sure you guys saw the comments. Well, that was the best decision ever. Yeah. Well, I, I would take a Mike Tomlin approach to that. And, and I, I don't know if you guys have listened to Mike Tomlin speak, but he talked about he, those are the kind of guys he wants. He wants to be able to coach. And if you can't coach and develop a guy, you have no business in, in that business. Right. And so maybe he wasn't picking up things as quickly as you would like to uh, him to have done, but that's your job as a coach is to develop a guy to get him to understand what he's seeing and to help him see those things. And so, um, you know, I don't know what could have been. Maybe we wouldn't have drafted Kyle Pitts as a blocking tight end instead, uh, instead of the pass catcher that he is. Um, but yeah, I just, I thought that whole story just absolutely amazing. Jeff, I want to ask you this, um, and you can speak from your perspective or any of the information that you may already know. Um, you spoke about the meeting that uh, Fields and also Arthur Smith had. Do you think mm-hmm. it was the meeting or alone, or do you think it was a combination of the meeting and also the film that Smith had been looking at on Fields play in college? So this is just pure speculation on my part. It had to be the meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, because, I mean, if you go back and – you go back and watch his college film, like his college film wasn't bad, mm-hmm. right? I mean, you go back and you watch the college football playoff battles that he had with Trevor Lawrence. Trevor went number one overall. Um, he was step for step with Trevor. Uh, I mean, you know, this this wasn't like, you know, Trevor stepped on the field and and was the obviously better quarterback. And I say that as, as again, somebody who holds a Clemson degree, right? Like I, I'm a big Clemson fan and, and Trevor Lawrence to me is probably the only quarterback in that draft that isn't a bust yet. Uh, not to say that he can't get there, but he's the only one that has kind of shown uh, the ability obviously to win a playoff game, which obviously matters. Um, but you go back and you watch those games against those, you know, the old adage, right? Big time players make big time plays in big time games. Yeah. How is that not Justin Fields in his college career? Uh, you know, and and so for me, I, I, I would speculate it was on that meeting, um, how you go from not wanting Justin Fields to all of a sudden believing that Desmond Ritter is the, the best available that you can get in the third round uh, just a couple of short years later doesn't make sense to me. Um, but, yeah, I think it was just that meeting. And, and obviously something went awry in that meeting. Um, the Arthur Smith was like, nope, not a chance. Um, you know, if he had to do it over again, what do you – I don't know. Uh, you know, we – People would obviously have to ask Arthur Smith that, uh, but you know, I, I think from where we're all sitting, I think he obviously made for my for me he made the wrong decision. I want to ask you if you don't mind, Jeff. I want to read a very interesting comment from the comment section. This is coming from Winston Thornton. It says, "Jeff, so with this new concerning Pitts and Fields draft, does this change the way we should look at Terry Fontenot for not overruling Smith? Is that an indictment to his lack of power?" No. So I, I think I. I and I've been very clear about this because I, I've gotten kind of the Terry Fontenot questions. I think when you look at the Braves, the Braves, the Falcons dynamic, right? And none of us really knew what this was until about three months ago during this whole head coaching process. Remember, it came out that the head coach here, Arthur Smith, did not report to Terry Fontenot. Right. N- name another professional league where the head coach doesn't report to the general manager. Right. That doesn't happen. So all of a sudden now we find out kind of three years later that Terry Fontenot didn't have any power, right? Like he was reporting to Rich McKay. The head coach was reporting to Rich McKay. Rich McKay, if we all forget, was fired as the GM 15 years ago, but somehow was promoted to being the, the president of football operations. Wasn't good enough to be the GM, but he was good enough to be the GM's boss, which still to this day didn't make any sense to me. Right. So I, I think when you look at that, I, I almost feel, and I've said this a few times, this to me is Terry Fontenot's first year. This is where he's finally getting to be the one in charge. And I think he's made some right moves. I think he's done some really good things. Um, and, and I think there's no reason for people to kind of worry about that moving forward. Um, other than the fact that you got Rich McKay out of the way, right? Like let him go mess up Atlanta United. Cause he's going to do that eventually anyway. <laughs> right? Like you finally got him away from the football side of this. 
let your general manager be the general manager. Let your head coach be the head coach. Stop trying to reinvent the wheel like it seems like Rich McKay was trying to do here in Atlanta because it didn't work, right? You, you look at it. Um, he, he, Thomas Dimitrov was allowed to, to be the general manager. He was allowed to make those mistakes. And I think they were so gun shy after what happened with, with Thomas Dimitrov and all of the cap hell he got into and all the bad moves that he made and his inability to, to actually drop talent in the first round, uh, first, second, third round. Uh, I think that scared them, and I think Rich McKay took it back and said, you know what, we're going to go get an inexperienced guy who won't challenge me. And we've seen how that's kind of worked out, and I think Arthur Blank finally listened to the right people, got Rich McKay out of the way, and is now going to allow Terry Fontenot to actually be the general manager. And so I'm excited about that. People can question about how, well, you know, should we question his leadership? No, I don't think you should. I think he was a young guy getting his first opportunity, and I think coming off the Dimitrov, the, the Thomas Dimitrov issues, I think he walked into a scenario that he wasn't knowingly walking into. And I think now we're finally going to see uh, uh, Terry Fontenot be able to actually be the general manager. And I think he's, uh, based off of the first month and, and the, the transactions that he's pulled off that first three days, uh, in free agency, I think everybody should be excited about that. Yeah, you can actually see the, the uh, a little bit of the transition of power because they're actually letting him pretty much be in charge of the yep. uh, press conferences now, you know, which was never the case before. Exactly. Um, I do want to ask you this. Um, I know you mentioned initially Chicago overplayed they, their hand. They were asking for an eighth round pick. Well, excuse me, the number eighth overall pick from Atlanta, which obviously did not happen. Um, I, w- I want to ask you this. Do you think Fontenot circled back and called them and said, hey, guys, you know, hey, are you willing to take a fourth or a fifth? Or, or, or was it after they asked for a first round or Terry was like, okay, I'm not calling these guys back? Yeah. So I think it's the same thing with the with the Eagles as well because the, the Falcons did reach out for Hassan Reddick, and this is this is also one that seems to be in my mentions a lot too. So I think Terry Fontenot did his homework, right? He reached out to the teams to start the dialogue. I think the teams came back and were very unrealistic with what they were expecting. And in, in teams that, um, as far as the, both the Bears and the Eagles go, they both wanted that number eight pick for for the players that the Falcons had had inquired about. And again. Outside of those top 10 players in the league, the Falcons were not going to give up number eight. And so for them, they moved on and they moved on very quickly. You know, when, when you look at the Falcons, they moved on and they started to work. They focused in on Kirk Cousins. Whether you like it or, or hate it or not, he was the best quarterback available in free agency and you signed him. Uh, you know, they then, you know, worked on doing some other things. Uh, you know, they wanted to revamp the wide receiver room. They did that. They wanted to add a return guy. They did that. Um, you know, yes, I think we all wanted them to do some, some defensive things. Um, still shocked that they haven't. Um, but I, I think once Terry Fontenot has decided that he's done with something, he's not going to go back and revisit it. He's moving on because he's trying to put the pieces together to try to build a championship team. And you can't move forward if you're still thinking about what's behind you. Mm, that's interesting. So once Terry is done, he, he's done. He's not turning around. It seemingly, and that's just, and again, that's not insider information. I'm just basing on what we've seen. What we've seen is when he reaches out, he gets some unrealistic answer. He's moving on um, because he's not one. He does not seem like one that wants to waste time, uh, effort, or energy on things that start out as unrealistic conversations. Okay. That makes sense. I want to bring this to your attention also. Uh, I'm assuming that you, did you see that video, Zach Robinson? It was a snippet of an interview when they asked him, okay, who, and this is, of course, prior to Kirk Cousins coming, but they asked him, hey, what kind of quarterback are you looking for? And he he started naming off all the attributes he want, accuracy, uh, a guy that's poor is doing crunch time. It seemed to me at that point in time, he was pretty much describing Kirk Cousins without saying Kirk Cousins' name. Did you ever see that that little snippet? I did not see that video, no. Okay, um, man, I wish I'd have queued it up and played it to you, played it for you. But this was weeks before they got Kirk Cousins, so it it kind of seemed like maybe this was at the point where they were done flirting with the idea of bringing Justin Fields here and had kind of zeroed in on Kirk Cousins. Now I want I want to ask you this, Jeff, and and this is just your own opinion because you know I, I do have my opinion on it, on it. But do you think 
with this offense, um, this officer coordinator, do you think that Justin Fields would have been an ideal fit for this team in 2024? Man, that's a – That that is a tough question, um, because I think Justin Fields is capable of far more than he's delivered in Chicago, um, and and I don't think he got, I, I don't think he was surrounded with in the with the best circumstances in Chicago, from a coaching staff, from a personnel, and all of those things matter for quarterbacks, right? I and and I don't care if you're Tom Brady, I don't care if you're Patrick Mahomes, Joe Montana, Warren Moon. You know, Randall Cunningham, I, I don't give a damn who you are. Um, you know, no quarterback is going to succeed if the person around them is, is trash. Uh, and we can all talk about quarterbacks lifting up players around them. But ultimately, um, you know, if, if you're throwing, you know, if you're throwing to Jerry Rice uh, or somebody else is throwing to some dude you've never heard of, there's a difference. Right. And so um, I, I think. Justin Fields is going to be served well um, learning behind a guy like Russell Wilson. Um, not to say that I wouldn't want him here because, yeah, if you could make a trade and you could have brought him here to learn behind Kirk Cousins, I'd still say the same thing. Uh, but when you when you talk to uh, – and Tom Brady, you know, I don't know if you guys watch his podcast or not, uh, but he's talked about it before where, you know, throwing these young guys in to, to, to play right away is, is, is really dumb. Um, and you know, he talked about himself being able to learn, learn behind, uh, drew, uh, and up uh, Bledsoe, by the way, up in new England, right? He got a chance to sit there for a year and a half before he was thrown into the fire. Drew Brees got a chance to sit and, and learn in, in San Diego. Um, you know, you look at, you know, uh, Aaron Rodgers got a chance to learn behind Brett Favre. Um, you know, you learn, you, you see all of these things and, and yes, there are exceptions to that rule. I mean, Peyton Manning didn't have to learn behind anybody, but Peyton Manning struggled his first three years in the league. Um, you know, Matt Ryan didn't have to sit. Matt Ryan was, was pretty good. Um, though he did struggle early on in his career. Um, you know, Philip Rivers got to sit behind Drew Brees, right? And then when he took the reins, so, uh, throwing young guys to the wolves tends to not end up very well for them. You know, it, it messes with their psyche. It messes with, with who they are. They start to question things. And so I think Justin Fields is in a really good position where he can actually take the time now to learn behind a Super Bowl winning MVP quarterback to see how he attacks the game, how he attacks the film room, how he attacks the day, how he attacks practice, how he does all of those things. Uh, and, it, you know, I wish he would have been able to do that here in Atlanta. Is is he good enough to come in and and, and lead this team uh, the way it's constructed currently to the playoffs? I don't think so. Because again, he hasn't he hasn't been able to pick up some of those nuances that I think are really important for the quarterback position. Very well said. I got to ring the bell for that. <laughs> Very well said. Um, and also, based on what you you told us about, you know, Arthur Smith really not liking feels is. Um, Justin Fields as a as a quarterback for him in 2021. I would like to ask you this: Do you think Smith had a, a a change of opinion now that he's with Pittsburgh, or did Mike Tomlin make an executive decision to say, "Hey, this is the guy that's going to be in the quarterback room"? Oh, that's Mike Tomlin. That Mike Mike Tomlin is not is not going to listen to no offensive coordinator on who he wants a quarterback. Uh, you know, for, for, for Pittsburgh, when you, when you look, they had an opportunity to go out again, again, a Super Bowl winning MVP. Like, I, I don't give a damn if you don't like Russell Wilson or not, that dude's got a ring. He's played for another one. Probably should have had to, I think we all agree on that one. Like I'm going to bring him in and then, Oh, by the way, I'm going to bring in a guy who has every tool that we would want in a future quarterback to learn behind that guy. And if you don't like him, I'll go find an offensive coordinator who will. Uh, and so, you know, I, you kind of look at, at, um, you know, like look at DQ, you know, he learned from his mistakes, at least, you know, it looked like he did. Uh, he's getting another chance now as, as, uh, as a head coach up, up in DC, um, you know, Arthur Smith, I, I don't know, you know, how you guys feel that dude just always came across as just the most stubborn, arrogant, <laughs> narcissistic person that you could find. Uh, and I don't know that he's smart enough to ever learn from his mistakes. I think he's going to always want to do it his way. 
Uh, and so I, you know, Mike Tomlin's just not going to deal with that nonsense. Uh, Mike Tomlin's going to do what he believes is best to get back to the playoffs, uh, to, to, you know, get Pittsburgh back is to being perennial contenders. Uh, and if an offensive coordinator doesn't like it, he'll go find somebody else because I'm sure he didn't have, uh, you know, who doesn't want to go work for Mike Tomlin? Right. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to, you don't want to coach these quarterbacks. Cool. I'll go get somebody who will. Uh, and he probably wouldn't have any issues finding a, a, a really good offensive coordinator to come in there and fill those shoes. And, and trust me, Jeff, we all on this show thought that Arthur Smith was a, a narcissist prick who thought he knew it all. <laughs> we we all felt that way. So, though, the, hey, that's how we felt. I know I got to get you out of here, man. Two, uh, just a couple more real quick questions. I'm going to get you out of here. Um, sure. How close or not close at all were the Falcons moving up in this year's draft? Trading up, was it any remote possibility they thought about it? Or no, it cost too much. No, so there, there actually there there were dialogues uh, about moving up um, in order to go get. If they had not got, gotten Kirk Cousins, they were going to entertain trying to move up to get. Um, I think people get really upset when I tell them Drake May is their is their quarterback. That's the guy they want. Mm. They don't. Jalen Daniels is not on their radar. Caleb Williams is not on their radar. Oh. They, Drake, May is the guy that they have deemed the one that they want. And so there were discussions about moving up to go get him. Uh, and 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 I don't know if those discussions have died. I know that they have. That I've been told from from um, my inside guy. Um, again, who has been a hundred percent accurate for three years now is I, I know I'm new to everybody there, but I've been putting out these things for three years now. And he's been absolutely accurate for three years, uh, th that I've been able to talk to him. Um, they really like May. um, they believe he has everything that you need to be successful. He doesn't have the baggage that Caleb Williams comes with. Uh, you know, he's the prototypical size at six, four, you know, he has, he's the athlete, um, you know, he, he, he really has everything that they're looking for. And so there have been discussions about trying to move up to get him. Um, they're hoping that he falls, um, whether he does or not, don't know. Uh, but if he is there at eight, they will throw out their entire draft board to draft him at eight and then they'll go on from there. Um, wow. but yeah, there were talks, uh, initially about moving up and what they would have to do. Um, uh, part of, uh, part of the head coaching search was they asked them very specifically, um, one, what is it going to take to, you know, they wanted uh, everybody to identify, um, the top 15 edge rushers in the NFL, mm -hmm. um, and who they thought was the top 15, uh, and then what it would take to go out and get one of those top 15. Uh, and then they also wanted to identify quarterbacks and, and, you know, what their ideal quarterback was and, and, um, you know, the skill set and, and all of those things. And so I know those are all really important to them. Uh, I think that also scheduled, you know, signals to me a change in the guard in the front office, um, of them asking those very specific type of questions. Right. Um, so yes, there was talk. Uh, will they probably not? Um, uh, I think there's actually a much better chance now that you see them move down, um, if the draft board falls away that they believe it will, uh, so they can pick up additional picks, uh, and address defense, you know, in the mid first to late first, um, and then early second as well. Man, Jeff, um, I, I want to thank you, man, for coming on once again. I really wish we had more time with you. Hopefully I can bring you back on the show again. Cause you got these people in the comments going crazy coaches <laughs> saying, I told you because you said what coach said um about may and drafting uh, drafting a quarterback this year so hopefully i can get you back on here one of these days one of these nights brother yeah man just reach out to me we'll make it happen i definitely will and also jeff please let everybody know where they can find you at on twitter if you don't mind uh yeah you can follow me on twitter at jmb uh it's my first middle last name uh underscore cu16 so uh jm is in mary b is in benedict underscore cu16 um, follow me there. We have conversations. Um, sometimes it gets out of hand, but by and large, it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And once again, Jeff, Hey brother, thank you very much, man. And hopefully we can do this again very soon. Heidi, I appreciate you brother. Uh, and yeah, let's, let's do it again. Hey, definitely will, man. Take care of yourself. Appreciate you. Thanks, brother. You as well. All right. Peace. Bye-bye. Right, Bye-bye. All right, y'all. That was Jeff, man.
And boy, 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 did he give us some inside information that we have been talking about. And I, I just hate it. I didn't have, I didn't have enough time to ask everything that I wanted to ask him. You know, you know, because he did me, a, he did me a real solid. Because I reached out him, I reached out to him today, and uh, he, you know, he's working. He's like, look, this is the time frame I can do it. I can definitely do it for you. But um, hopefully, I can get him on here one more. At least one more time when I got just more time to really pick his brain, because I, I rarely, I rarely ever will write down anything uh, when I when I do a live stream. It, I, I'm freestyling 99 percent of the time. The only time that I, I'm not freestyling is if I'm doing an interview like I did today, and I, I want to write down questions or just write down a, a certain structure that I want to stay within. So I, I wrote down things that I want to ask me today, but just didn't have enough time. <laughs> I didn't have enough time, but we got to bring it back. Uh, and I and I said to myself, I said, I know Coach is going crazy in the comments because Jeff pretty much said everything Coach was telling us on the Waffle House on uh, Friday night. So, <clears throat> Coach, <laughs> everything you said the Falcons should do is obviously things that the Falcons kind of think they should do too also. Uh, so, shout out to you on that, Coach. Uh, but this is great, y'all. This, this is magnificent, man. Uh, we, we got to bring Jeff back on here, here very, very soon. Um, the, the conversation revolved around, revolving around Justin uh, Fields was interesting. Uh, it, it looks like apparently it was Arthur Smith um, who did not want Justin Fields based on the meeting uh, that him and Fields had, a one-on-one -on -one meeting. And I do vividly remember myself and um, Uncle Steve uh, – Marcus Washington and a lot of the other people who were on that that live stream, that draft live stream in 2021, uh, we all wanted Fields, and we, we thought it would be a, a great idea at that point in time to draft him and let him sit behind Matt Ryan and learn for maybe a year or two. But um, obviously, Coach Arthur Smith uh, didn't feel the same. And ironically, um, he's now coaching him uh, this year. So that, that should be an interesting um, – dynamic uh in their relationship um but but y'all that that's that's really all i had I, I didn't really plan on coming to stay long uh, i just really wanted to bring jeff on, on here and, and kind of you know pick his mind uh, uh about the uh information that he's been putting out and like he said man his his information has been 100 spot on you know so y'all make sure that you do go follow him uh at twitter let me give you guys his twitter once again here let me pull it up He's on Twitter at JMB underscore C as in Charlie, U as in Utah 16. Again, make sure to follow Jeff. He's at JMB as in boy underscore C as in Charlie, U16. You know, he drops a lot of game um, for the for the Falcons, you know, so make sure to shoot him a follow. Uh, I want to say shout out to the artist. Thank you very much, John Harris, for the super chat. Appreciate you always showing support for the show, John. Thanks very much. Just as I told you a long time ago, it was some crap. And I, I guess I assume that John is speaking of the um, organizational uh, hierarchy <laughs> that uh, Jeff spoke about uh, that was that has been going on on Flowery Branch. And that has definitely been a, a, a topic of, uh, of conversation, you know, on this show and uh, other shows. Uh, in Falcon circles, and you know, we, we got a little information on how everything was going. Uh, so very, very interesting, you know, very interesting. Uh, but I am I am happy that Terry Fontenot is you know finally truly you know running the show uh like he wants to run it. Um, and and I and I think he's gonna take us in, in a good direction, you know. Uh I personally like, and I'm sure y'all know already, but I, I personally, in, I was personally in favor of the signing of Kirk Cousins. Um, I think it was a good fit. Uh, as, as Jeff said, he was the best quarterback available at the time, and, and we got him. And we we desperately needed a quarterback. Um, I just didn't want to do the uh, unproven thing again for another year, and we're sitting here just wasting away. Ricky contracts for Kyle Pitts, Ricky contracts for Drake London. Uh, I wanted a guy that that we know can come in here and, and play quarterback at a, a very, very uh, proficient level. So I was happy that we got Kirk. Um, hopefully we'll keep him upright and healthy all 17 games 
uh, of the year this year. Hey, but this is good, y'all. Like I said, hopefully um, we can get Jeff back on here. Um, you know, I'm going to try my very best to do the WAP House this Friday. Like I said, my schedule has changed, so sometimes I have to get in the bed on Friday night because I have to get up early. But I'm going to try to do the WAP House on Friday, and, you know, I, we can bring the entire crew on here, and then we can just have, you know, we can have a discussion about, today's uh interview that we had with jeff i think that'll be a pretty good thing to talk about you know all the information that we got in su such a short uh period of time uh john also says another super chat with john thank you very much for that john we appreciate it john says thank you Belichick. so shout out to bill Belichick. <laughs> so john is happy that <laughs> Belichick went to flower branch and maybe got some straightening and i and i thought it was very interesting too uh that he said of like if somehow Drake May is still there at eight, they're gonna drop their entire draft board and they're gonna draft Drake May. So evidently Drake May is their guy. Jane Daniels is not their guy. Caleb Williams, they don't want to deal with all the baggage and the the prima donna ness that comes with Caleb Williams. So Drake May is their guy. Very, very interesting. Very interesting to, to find it out. Very interesting. Um, coach says, uh, I ain't mess with y'all no more. Y'all trying to make me see it crazy. <laughs> coach said, Hey, that's your opinion, but I got my opinion. It's my opinion. Shout out to you, coach. Y'all should uh, make sure to follow coach uh, on, on YouTube at the coach's corner as well. He's gonna be starting his YouTube show very, very soon. It's gonna be totally different than what a lot of the rest of us content creators do. So make sure to show him some love. Also, make sure to show John Harris and Winston Thorne. A lot of love on the eye test. Um, they're on every Wednesday at 10 p.m. Every now and then I'll jump jump in there, but 95% of the time I, I'll, I'll be in the comments. So make sure to show the eye test a bunch of love uh, and make sure to show uh, Coach a bunch of love. I'll set the coach's corner as well. Again, y'all, I didn't plan to stay long. Just really wanted to come in here and give Jeff an opportunity to, to tell us some information, uh, which he did a good job of doing. So, again, thank you, Jeff, man. I appreciate you coming in. Also, thank you to everybody in the chat, man, showing a bunch of love like y'all always do. Peace.